Yeah, she towered over a big mark. The big, 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 big Dutch gal. With a crane. Yeah, that was in the 80s. And now, you know, you're employed on a PC. And this week is time change weekend. <laughs> Eight an hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes me feel so much better up here. My neighbors are young. Can you use that house to a sale? Neighbors. So you can buy out the house. Yeah. And they got to get for you. Nothing. Another three quarter percent. Yeah, prime and says seven. Seven o'clock, I'll call the meeting to order. I'm Grace Lesbrons, Cascade Township Supervisor. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee Norhook. Here. Trustee McDonald. Here. Supervisor Lesbrons. Here. Treasurer Pierce. Here. Trustee Cathal. Here. Trustee Snipley. Present. And Clerk Slater. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion or discussion for approval of tonight's agenda? Shipley makes a motion to approve the agenda as presented. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Trustee McDonald, to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Article 4, presentations. Representatives from the Grand Valley Metro Council are here tonight at my request to present to the board and also those who are watching uh, their airport access study. I thought it is important for the board to be briefed on this as the proposed plans directly impact both Cascade and its residents. And I hope this is a beginning of an ongoing dialogue about, or an ongoing di a dialogue on this topic with township decision makers. Uh, following the Grand Valley Metro Council's presentation, township staff may have some additional comments. So with that, thank you for coming tonight. Well, thank you for having us. Um, yeah, as Grace said, um, I'm with the Metro Council. My name is Laurel Joseph. I am the Director of Transportation Planning. Um, our consultant project manager, Jeremy Windsor, is on the Zoom and will be providing the bulk of the presentation, but I did just want to take the opportunity before he starts to provide a little bit of background about how this study came to be. Um, when we were developing our fiscal year 2022 unified planning work program, which is a document that outlines all the federally assisted transportation planning activities that happen in this region in a given fiscal year, um, we put out a call for planning project proposals, asking our members what additional kinds of regional planning studies they wanted us to work on. Um, and one of the projects that came forward for multiple sources was a new airport access study. Um, and so the study was supported by our policy committee and board to be included in our work program. While GVMC is leading the study, uh, we wanted to pull in project partners right away from the beginning. Um, so we formed a, com a committee, excuse me, that included um, representatives from transportation agencies like MDOT, the Road Commission, the airport, as well as local agencies like City of Kentwood and Cascade Township staff to collaborate on the development of the RFP, to evaluate proposals and to make a recommendation to our board regarding consultant selection. Um, we also have a larger technical advisory committee that includes all of those project partners, um, as well as representatives from the county, the rapid, um, the right place, the Grand Rapids Chamber and um, experience Grand Rapids. So there've been a lot of people involved with this project from, from the start. And um, we have also sought and continue to seek feedback from as many stakeholders and members of the public 
as possible with really the ultimate goal of finding ways to improve accessibility, safety, and functionality of the whole system to meet current and future needs. So we really appreciate the opportunity to come here and engage with you all tonight. Um, and I will turn it over to Jeremy to go through the presentation if that is good. Okay, cool. Thanks so much. Thank you, Laurel. Um, <clears throat> hi, everyone. Jeremy Windsor from AECOM. Can everybody hear me just fine? Yeah, yes. Great. Uh, I have a presentation or a set of slides. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I think try to share those unless uh, somebody at the township is planning to pull those up separately. Is it possible to make it louder? Okay. I can also try to speak up if that uh, is helpful. Thanks. Are folks also seeing my screen? Yep. yep. All right, great. So uh, I have a number of slides to kind of uh, brief you all on the study uh, that we've been working on. Um, I, I love having conversations that are kind of interactive. So I guess uh, please feel free if, if as I'm talking about something, uh, to uh, interject or, or to ask a question if, if something doesn't make sense. Um, but I'm going to try to get through in about uh, 15 or so minutes, um, just kind of an overview of what we've been working on, where we are in the study so far. All right, so that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so just an overview real quick, uh, and hopefully the, the slides advance here to our study area. As Laurel said, this study is, is very much focused on the airport itself, uh, but we decided early on and working with the committee that, that we can't just um, focus solely on the airport, that we really need to think about uh, the surrounding area, growth and development that's happening in that area. Uh, and so we kind of chose uh, the, the zone that you see up on the screen here right now, um, that incorporates portions of four different communities, uh, including Cascade Township. Um, and, and one reason that's really important for that is to, you know, accommodate some of the approach lines that are really kind of the most, um, the major access points to the airport itself. Uh, and we'll look more closely at some of that in a few minutes here. Uh, this is an overall schedule for the study. So we did start uh, late last year and have been uh, working pretty much throughout this entire year uh, to document uh, existing conditions, uh, to develop kind of goals for the study, uh, look at some initial alternatives, and we've done an initial evaluation of those, uh, and then are going out and um, trying to refine the practical alternatives into a set of recommended alternatives and in in an action plan. So we're really kind of in this space kind of between the point where we've identified some alternatives, we've engaged around some of them uh, and, and started to understand the technical hurdles to, to get there. Uh, and we're getting close to potentially starting to um, identify some recommended alternatives that, that we would put in for future consideration. Phase, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I thought I heard somebody there. Um, at each phase, we, we kind of went through three phases of engagement, and we've gone through two of those, and we have one more that's still upcoming. Uh, that's going to include some public meetings, some public surveys, but also uh, discussion with groups like Cascade Township and some of the roadway implementation uh, organizations like MDOT and the county. So why is the airport study, airport access study being completed? Let me go back one. Well, first, uh, it's about growth at the airport itself. So Grand Rapids, whoop, it's just automatically advancing, I'm sorry. Uh, growth over the last 40 years has really expanded at the airport itself. Um, there was a, a major amount of growth in the 10 years leading up to the pandemic. Uh, and even through the pandemic itself, although this red line right here kind of shows the fall off that happened uh, in early 2020 and, and into late 2020, uh, recovery into 2022 has exceeded in terms of the amount of uh, employments, uh, even some of the forecasts coming out of the um, pandemic that they thought 
they would do. So growth at the airport in terms of the amount of activity um, has been a lot lately and has continued to continue to grow. Um, what is the airport doing on, about that? You can look this up. There's information out there about their kind of master plan for growth at the airport. Um, it includes you know, additional concourses. Uh, this concourse A is, is part of their uh, master plan for the future. Um, and there's also <clears throat> some additional supporting uh, investments in surrounding areas like a, a consolidated rental car facility uh, that they're looking to do to make access to the airport more convenient. Our study kind of took that as a launching point and started looking at transportation data within uh, this study area here. So one of the things we looked at was kind of congestion and um, driving data, uh, safety information. Uh, one thing that stood out is a lot of the, the approach points to the airport itself, really there's only one way to get in today, right? It's um, at Patterson and 44th and kind of along uh, Postuma Drive that, that circulates into the terminal area. Um, the approach points to that are kind of some areas where there's a continued amount of uh, safety incidents that occur um, that kind of slow down traffic or can kind of impact the reliability of access into the airport during certain times of the day. We're not just focused though on roadway access, although, although that is part of our work. Uh, we're also looking at multimodal access as well. One thing that's noticeable is that you know, the airport really kind of represents um, an endpoint in a lot of ways to a lot of the uh, regional biking and walking pathways. Uh, and so they are continuing some of those opportunities to uh, kind of safely move on foot or on bike, something else that we're looking at within the study area. And then transit as well. Um, we know that the transit system today um, extends a little bit into Cascade Township and in a few places, including at the airport. Uh, the rapid has also been experimenting with some flexible services that's what this blue shaded area is representing right now that's kind of flex routing um, but a lot of the services the transit services within the region kind of terminate at or around the airport today we also took a look at travel flows this is data that comes from um, tracking of, of mobile devices uh, to look, look at existing travel patterns within the area right now. And one thing that's notable, of course, is there's a lot of travel that's within the study area that's not has doesn't have anything to do with the airport. Um, there's a lot of uh, travel getting around the area that the airport is. Um, a lot of um, trips that are destined for the zone that's around 28th Street, for example, uh, and a growing number of concentration of trips around kind of the M6 interchange with M37. We used a lot of this data all existing conditions memorandum that's up on the website uh, that GVMC has for this um, for this project uh, to identify a set of key needs that we wanted to uh, address with the different alternatives or options that were considered during this study. One is to address the fact that there are limited access points to the airport or really there's only one way in and one way out at this time. Um, that access point does require kind of an indirect circulation path from uh, the major expressways, one that uh, will usually take you past a few different uh, busy intersections or traffic lights. Uh, we know, as we do documented before, there's a lot of airport expansion plans uh, that are being considered, and, and we wanted to make sure that the option supported those. Uh, we wanted to look at not only automobile access, but other convenient access options, uh, such as rideshare, uh, such as public transportation. And we wanted to provide growth for um, growth, provide support for growth and development around the airport. The south uh, east quadrant of the region is, is one that has experienced a lot of growth and is projected to, if you look at GVMC's plans for the future, uh, continue in that way, both people and jobs. We took that information and have gone through uh, development of some key alternatives, some, some different alternatives that could be looked at uh, to kind of fill out the grid and to provide better access to the airport in the future. <clears throat> Those and kind of gone through an evaluation process. Uh, we started by just looking at options that would best support that those need elements that I talked about and develop some practical alternatives. And we're really at the point now uh, where we are evaluating 
to, to figure out what we're going to put into our studies recommended alternatives for the future. And that's going to be based on a number of items, including the transportation benefits, uh, compatibility with planning and land use plans, um, uh, estimated project costs, and what the public says about some of these options. So what are the options that have been considered by this study? So we kind of div divided these into a couple of different buckets. These are roadway options. Um, one is something that was contemplated even when this first 36th Street uh, interchange was put in uh, a couple of decades ago now, um, was a more direct access pathway that kind of fed directly off of 36th Street. Um, that could either come in a very direct way into the terminal or potentially skirt the um, current and planned runways that are on the north side of the airport. Uh, we've also looked at an option that would more branch off of Thornapple River Drive and uh, go beneath the north-south runway uh, to access the terminal from that direction. Sir, where can you, this is the kind of the meat of what interests us at the township. Can you go into more detail and, and describe what we've got now and what your proposal is? What's the indirect access on 1B? Sure. And also, can you go into more detail on the direct access? And I apologize. I'm having a little bit of um, breaking up, but I think you're asking for some more detail about the, the nature of the access points. Yeah, just detail. Yes. What it's now and what you want it to look okay. like or what yes. they're thinking. Well, uh, there's some. Sure. I'm going to stop my video just in the hopes that that helps my hearing your audio a little bit better um, because I'm getting some kind of interference. So sorry about that. Yeah, there are some slides that are follow this that, that give you a little bit better sense of each of these, especially these access points here. Uh, but just to summarize, uh, you know, we have also looked at um, interchanges on M6 and some enhancements that could be done to the current approach points along um, M37 and Patterson. I think this might get you a little bit closer to an understanding of what um, maybe what you were just asking about. Uh, so, you know, direct access from the 36th Street interchange, what that could look like is an extension of the roadway um, kind of an arterial roadway that would come off of the interchange here that would travel onto the airport property um, that would need to enter into kind of a below gate grade tunnel that would go beneath the, um, the runways here uh, and then connect with the existing circulation pattern that occurs at the terminal today. Um, this one also shows a potential new connection that could be made. This is kind of an optional item, but um, the main uh, the main project itself would be a new roadway access uh, that would need to go beneath the, the runway um, coming in this direction. Uh, one thing that's much worth mentioning here is there is a future runway that the, the airport has in their plans for kind of the next 20 years. Um, this type of option could be phased in, uh, you know, as they're doing continued expansion at the airport itself. Uh, it might be that implementation of this is made easier if it's uh, accomplished at the same time or in a similar frame. Uh, in terms of the airport access from Thornapple River Drive, there's currently a drive now called Air Cargo drive that kind of branches off of Thornapple River and provides access to a lot of the freight operations that are on the east side of the airport. Um, this concept would, you know, similarly to the, to the previous one, but just coming in from a different entrance point, branch off of Thornapple River Drive, um, would travel onto the airport property, would then be tunneled beneath the runway through here um, until it gets to the um, the immediate east side of the terminal and then plug into the drive that exists, the Gateway Drive and Ostoma Drive that currently circulates around. So this is a different access point and I, I wouldn't label either of these as proposals. These are just different options 
uh, that could be considered to provide a new pathway to the airport itself. A drawback of this particular option is that there would be a lot more reconfiguration of the airport property uh, in order to actually make this work. And, and we've been working with the airport on kind of uh, talking through and, and working through some of the, the complications with this. Hopefully that, was there additional questions about uh, these kind of access points? Uh, I wanna make sure I'm answering the question that was asked earlier. Um, for now, yes. No, for now you're good. I mean. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, all right, so another couple of things that have been considered as, as options uh, for a couple of different reasons. One being that um, you know, the, the airport itself is kind of a, um, a to transportation and kind of through movements uh, in this portion of the region. Uh, also because there is a growing amount of access, uh, kind of freight cargo access and um, potential for, for growth in that in the future. And in, in a lot of those businesses are actually, we, we talked to a few of them connected to businesses that are kind of located in this um, zone on the immediate west side of the airport. So uh, there's kind of a lot of traffic movement that moves back and forth. Um, there's a lot of access needed to these businesses. Uh, and so, you know, the, part of the, one of the items that's under study is, is potentially to look at additional access point to M6, which is something that MDOT and the county have um, looked at in the past, or at least contemplated in the past, although not any, uh, you know, in detail, um, studies have been done at this time. Uh, so this option, there's a couple of different versions that uh, we had looked at. One, for example, would be uh, provide an act of full interchange at 48th Street. Um, this would allow for access in both directions um, to M6. Um, and that would then, uh, you know, allow for trips to be made to kind of access some of these uh, areas on the east side of the airport or to potentially even access a new um, access point on this side. But these options are not necessarily about as much the access to the terminal as kind of potentially completing the, the transportation network on this area of the airport itself. One thing you'll notice on the map is a potential option that was looked at again to kind of better connect these things together. Uh, would be a new kind of ring road. Um, you know, one thing we noticed when we looked at the previous uh, township planning, and, and we know that there might be some efforts to uh, kind of revisit that, um, is that there was kind of a divide between uh, residential and agricultural to the east of M6 and um, a look toward more um, development, commercial, industrial, potentially on the west side of M6. And so some of these options are a little bit predicated on the idea that um, you know, some of the traffic that might be gravitating to areas around the airport wouldn't want to be routed through um, some of the more rural or agricultural portions of the town. Mr. Windsor? Yes. Uh, that perks our ears because we, I've been here almost two years and I don't know what the discussions were prior to that. Um, but that isn't the case. We just went through a year long process of gathering tons of community feedback from residents with multiple surveys and meetings. And in fact, it's the opposite. So it's the opposite. It's overwhelmingly has residents supporting um, preservation, green space, being proactive and where the township allows growth and, and protecting the remaining open space that we have. So as far as your information gathering, I would say this page is not consistent. Um, points one and two are, are no longer, it's just not accurate. In okay. fact, it's the opposite. Yeah, so we were basing off of kind of documented plans, but I think we'll need to revisit that, it sounds like. And, and yes, because yeah, there's new leadership on the board, and there's also the staff member who was primarily in charge of that is no longer with the township. Okay. So some of the underlying um, thoughts here, again, these are not proposals, but options that are you know, have been suggested uh, to kind of round out the network um, might need to be revisited in the, in the light of that in terms of, you know, one of the screening criteria we looked at was land use compatibility. They support 
local community plans. Um, yeah, this is incompatible with our land use plans right now. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if it's worth talking about this one, but uh, this is the a, a similar, slightly different version of the um, interchange access uh, that would connect to Thornapple River and 48th um, instead of just all of the ramps uh, connecting at 48th right here. So um, again, I think we can look forward to engaging more about the incompatibility um, and kind of working that into our evaluation and where we are, if that's where the township is going and kind of documenting their, their plans and vision for this portion of the, of the township for the future. Any more questions on that? I, this is a little bit of a break into the next piece. You can carry on as far as I'm concerned because I'm gonna lash out at you at the end of your presentation. Continue, please. Thank you. Um, so multimodal enhancements, uh, looking at not only the roadway aspects, uh, but the um, transit and bike access. So one thing that's risen as a priority in a lot of our planning and a lot of our outreach has been um, to consider express bus services that would connect to downtown and potentially other locations. Um, this is seen as important for a tourism standpoint as well as just a, a business wise. Um, so that's something that um, we're looking at as a possibility. Uh, expanded transit service um, that would connect into potentially uh, some of the growth areas of Cascade. Um, that's something that uh, we've seen a lot of jobs and um, development kind of not only for Cascade, but also Caledonia portion and something that could be a long term option is to uh, better connect that or give options to for to uh, connect to those areas via transit. Um, expanded curb management is something that the airport is working on, potentially adding uh, additional levels, adding some more space for uh, transportation uses to, to meet up at the airport as the airport grows into the future. And then looking at bike and pedestrian connectivity, uh, there's a lot of uses that are at the airport or approaching the airport. Uh, that including a high school there, um, and there's a fair amount of pedestrian activity, but there's really not any uh, way to safely kind of move along those drives right there. So a lot of the bike and ped network really kind of come up to the edge of Patterson and stop there today. Uh, part of our study is looking at ways to actually complete those connections into the terminal zone. So we have gone out for a couple of rounds of public input, as I mentioned uh, in kind of the spring timeframe. Um, we did kind of just ask people about needs. We got a lot of comments on the map, so to speak, about places where people saw uh, particular needs. This is one of the things that kind of helped us define what the needs for the study were. Um, you know, a lot of comments that focused on the Patterson and um, and 44th intersection and, and needs for improvement at that location. A lot of requests for more direct routes to the airport, kind of branching off of 36th Street, for example, um, and some other smaller scale um, opportunities and, and comments that we received. When we went back out in the most recent time frame, August and September, uh, we came out with some of the ideas that I've been showing you over the last uh, number of slides here. We got over 6,000 responses. A lot of those. Um, were kind of both within the region and outside the region because uh, the airport also promoted the survey uh, on their location. Um, and there were numerous uh, uh, responses from those with residential zip codes within the region. And so we've uh, prioritized looking at those. Uh, one of the things we asked, I'm not going to go through all of the results, but one of the things we asked is what, what do people think is most important? You know, these are some of the things that we've uh, looked at as potential options in the study so far. Um, and a couple of things really rose to the top. One was more public transit and shuttle options to the airport and to surrounding areas. Uh, another thing that rose to the top was really secondary access point from the north or the west. And a lot of the other options also had support, but those were clearly the ones that kind of rose to the top. So overall, in terms of the survey response that we got, there was high support for some of the practical alternatives that I've shown you before. 
Um, the highest support was for some of the access points uh, from 36th Street and direct shuttles um, between downtown and the airport. Um, and a lot of comments about pick up and drop off area and congestion in there is, is it needs something to solve over the long term. I'm going to close out with just talking about kind of where we are overall and next steps. So we've identified some of the needs, we've examined some of the different options, and we're kind of in this uh, middle space right now. We're kind of between looking at what's practical or potential and, and coming up with some recommendations. And some of the things that might be recommended uh, are things that could be done in the near term. Some of those things could be considered as the long term as the airport expands. Uh, but the, the purpose of the study is not just to kind of um, draw some lines on the map, but also to set up uh, next steps and timeframes and start to understand uh, the cost and, and how to move some of these projects forward. So that's going to be something focus on as we look over the next few months uh, to engage one more time and to talk through some of the different options and, and kind of set a path for GVMC and its partners in the future. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm happy to take any other questions. Who well, can go first? Uh, where's the funding coming from for this project? I'm sorry. For the study itself, or the funding, did you ask? The implementation of the. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, um, currently at this point, our we have um, allocations of federal funding through 2026, and those have been programmed through our transportation improvement process. So, any recommended projects that would come out of this study, either for further study or for implementation, funding sources would have to be developed for those. So they are not identified currently, but I think part of the implementation plan would be to point us in direction for grants or other ways to, to fund these projects. Thank you. My turn. First of all, Laurel and Jeremy, thank you for your presentations. And in no way should you take this as being a personal uh, shot at either one of you. I've lived out here since 1968. And if you think for one moment are you going to infringe on the residential areas or Thornapple River or the safety of our residents? You're sadly mistaken. I will fight that tooth and nail. And you think Russia has got a problem? You're going to, they're going to have a cakewalk compared to what you guys do. And that's all I have to say. Whatever you do within the confines of your fence, I really don't give two hoots. But when you affect the residents of this township, I do. That's all I have. I have a comment. Clerks later. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I find it somewhat disturbing though that you've been planning and drawing and pre-planning for a year and this is the first we've heard about it. So as a board, I would think you would give us a seat at the table before you make too many more plans. Thank you. Sue, I'll speak to that just a little bit because um, I've been on the technical advisory committee and I did bring an update to the planning commission back at one of their September meetings. So I'll make sure I'm doing a better job moving forward, communicating with the board and the planning commission on where this is going and updates with this oh. plan there. Okay. Grace, can I yes. ask one thing? Of course. If, if all the parties came together and, 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 and there was a, an ideal option, what's the airport's time frame for a potential implementation? I think it's like a 2040 project, a 2030 project. How far out are you looking? Just to give us a, a feel for what's the reality of this potentially. Yeah, so I mean, some of the alternatives that you saw up there are more complicated and more expensive than others, right? So um, especially in coming up with funding, it's unlikely that anything would happen within the next five years, for example. Um, but we do, and especially when you're looking at the direct access from 36th Street, thinking about that new that new runway that they're potentially going to expand to, like making plans to allow for the implementation of both when it happens, but nothing would be, I think Jeremy did for the direct access is that medium term. So maybe within 10 years, they think it's potentially reasonable. 
Yeah, I mean, that, we haven't gotten to any firm decisions on any of that. I think we intend to divide uh, the plan itself or, or what comes out of the plan in terms of any recommendations into things that could be accomplished in the near term, potentially within the first five to 10 years um, into the medium term, which is maybe 10 years or so. And then there might be some very long term types of projects. I believe that um, you know the airport's plan, uh, ultimate plan, I think goes out something like 20 years. Uh, so it could be that some of these improvements do kind of um, you know, potentially uh, become more necessary or, or could be combined in some ways with them, some of their plans that go out uh, as far as that. But no decisions have been made, let I mean, no decisions have been made about what the recommendations are, let alone um, decisions made about uh, the time frame for those recommendations. Thank you. So realistically, you're thinking within 10 to 20 years. Correct. Provided that everything falls in line, we all fall in line, everybody agrees on a plan, there's funding and all these other variables Correct. that aren't yeah. determined yet. Okay. I'm just trying to get that I mean, time frame. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. And, and the reality is, especially for the more complex projects, like Laura was saying, it, it, it could likely take 10 years at a minimum for some of those to uh, kind of go through the process that, that would be needed. So yeah, this is definitely out at the longer term for especially the more complex pieces of this. Um, things like, you know, setting up additional transit service to the airport. I mean, that could be something that's accomplished in the next five years as an example. Trustee Kessel. As uh, you presented the plan, uh, the, and I, I kind of agree with John too, um, the 36th Street 96 seems like the most direct route to the airport um, right through their property. Uh, it doesn't affect the zoning of uh, our properties or rezoning of our properties. That seems to be the most direct route to the airport. I often thought, why wouldn't we have a direct access to the airport that way and cut out having go down to Patterson and cut in that way? So I, I you know, again, we haven't had a lot of input on this matter, but it would seem like that would be the best route. I mean, I'm not a planner uh, in that regard, but the one that would least affect the township and also provide a good secondary access to the airport. I um, spoke with the head of the road commission about a month ago after I saw this, and he said that that exact spot, 36th Street, if you're talking about long-term growth and safety and getting more people to the airport to accommodate the airport's growth, that's exactly what that exit was designed for. It specifically, it end, it, it would keep traffic off those inside streets. It keeps expressway traffic for all the people that are traveling to the airport to fly out of it. They just come from the expressway, exit 36th street, go directly into the airport's property. That would actually, and he said from, he's not sure about the other proposals, but it's a no brainer from a safety growth perspective. He thought the other ones were demotivated maybe by other desires, but that is the specific reason they designed the exit why they did. So I just am confused about all these additional entrance proposals. Trustee Nordhook. Yeah, I, I would be uh, supportive of the 36th street exit. I think that's a real clear way in. I could even have a, a little spur off of that to go over to the freight terminals as well. Mm -hmm. um, I am very opposed to anything off M6 coming through our properties there. Uh, the other ones seem to be congestive on our properties again. Uh, the 36th Street one I'm, I'm game for, but now on the bus and the shuttles from downtown, we've just gone through as a township uh, working on reducing bus service where it's not being used. Um, what were your um, what were your numbers on the bus? How much usership or ridership is there? Because uh, Grata gave us or Rapid gave us numbers. I would assume in your numbers, you got the same ones we did. So can you tell me what those numbers are? What ridership is down? The numbers for current? Ridership, you're you're asking. Yeah, they're they're down. Can you tell me by how much? I think for existing services, I, I guess I 
can't speak to the current. I, I know that ridership was down maybe 50% uh, from pre-pandemic um, at one point for the rapid. Now, you know, this is something that would be representative of a new potential service. And that's not something that um, we've projected the exact ridership for, I guess, for this, um, for some of these options. But yeah, I don't know if that covers the nature of your question. Yeah, I would not be in favor of doing any more busing out here uh, when ridership's down that low. I, I, I'm just not in favor of the busing. So I, I do think you need to keep this board a lot more informed than you have been. You're, you're like I said, you're two thirds of the way through your process here. And this is the first time it's been presented to our entire board. We have a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Trustee Shipley. One more uh, comment. <clears throat> you're in the, uh, advising phase now, according to this last slide. As I mentioned in the past, since 1968, I personally have not received any card asking for my comment on expansion of the airport. This township board is proud of itself for its transparency. We've stalled a lot of projects here within the township, just gathering up the input from the residents. I would strongly recommend that before you have any occupancy of this township against their will, i.e. Russia, uh, you, you talk to the people and find out what they want as residents out here, not necessarily somebody just flying in and out of the airport. I'm done. We have a question from one of our planning commissioners. The graph shows a majority of people wanted access from the north and the west. The map shows most new points or proposed new points on the east side. Can you address that? Uh, yes, I believe that's that's an incorrect uh, notation on the on the graph. I apologize for that. Yeah, it, the the certainly the items that were looked at in terms of uh, potential new access points were from the north or from the east. Um, so I, I believe that's just a mistake. Um, on the graph itself. So we'll take that from. Yeah, wait, I'm sorry. I just, uh, the proposed access point, can you repeat that? Because it's important for Cascade. Yeah, sure. No, the, the question that was asked in the survey was about uh, certainly, there's access from the west right now, um, but there would should, whether that's considered <laughs> additional access from the north or from the east. Um, but um, unfortunately, it's mistaken on this slide, uh, and it says the word west. Okay. Are we on six? Was from the east, though. Yeah, southeast. That's the 36th Street exit. That's, I mean, that's the answer. It's the most practical and the least intrusive. I would love, so you talked about some of the processes that have happened since your last master plan was updating. updated. Would you be able to provide us with some of the reference materials so we can incorporate it into our process because that was not available when this the information gathering became, began. So we would obviously love to further engage and incorporate that into the study. So thank you. Thanks Manager for that. Tracy. Yeah, just the introduction with the involvement of Cascade Township is just inconsistent with what I've been a part of. So it's I'm very appreciative you came tonight at our request, my request. Thank you. It's really important. Stinks being the last to know. Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much for taking the time to um, come tonight and to answer questions. You. Yeah, we'd be happy to do it again. <clears throat> Thank you. Article five, public comments. Anyone wishing to comment, either come to the podium or virtually, please state your name and address for record keeping and try to limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mauricio Fernandez. Maury Fernandez, I live at 2272 Cascade Lakes. Thank you for having me and I'll be quick. Um, 
So ACOM is a very reputable engineering company. I don't, you're still out of LA, Jeremy? No. Yeah. yeah, okay. And I just met Laurel. For, I just met Laurel for the first time. It's a pleasure meeting you. But there are inconsistencies that myself as a resident um, in this proposal um, that and concerns that I would have. And number one, that all of you good folks who are representing us knew nothing of this. <laughs> I know of the LA LaGuardia project that took almost 30 years. This is not Queens, New York. This is not the LaGuardia project. And much of their failure was because of many of the things you've said here now, a lack of collaboration <laughs> and discussion and vetting at the very beginning. And so I, I saw this, I've seen the same things. I think you do have to plan for the future, but you have to do it in a very conscientious, consistent, <laughs> rational manner that is congruent with the desires of the residents and of less impact to the residents. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Thank you. If our Zoom participant would like to participate in this public comment section, please raise your hand. Supervisor Lesburns, back to you. Okay. Approval of the consent agenda. Questions or discussion or motion? We make some motion to approve the consent agenda. Support. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Trustee Kessel, to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have no financial actions or unfinished business tonight, so that brings us to Article 9, New Business. 086-2022, Cascade Township Proposed Vendor Policy. Manager Sweezy? Great, thank you. So the Township Board recently received and accepted the forensic analysis report that was commissioned from and so the combination of the report is a series of 10 recommendations made by Plant Moran to improve uh, the policies and processes of the township. Uh, and the township board has directed the township staff to come up with a plan to implement those recommendations. So really central to the recommendations is the development of policies, processes, and procedures related to how the township selects, vets, tracks, and maintains vendors that do business with the township. Uh, so to that end, uh, we've developed a draft vendor registration policy, uh, along with the uh, documents that would go along. Um, uh, these would provide clear policies and protocols for the township staff and officials on the selection of vendors that do business with the township. Uh, so there are, uh, like I asked, as I mentioned, there are 10 recommendations in it, uh, and the policy before you tonight would uh, help to address six of those. So the first recommendation is that the Cascade should consider implementing a policy that one, requires a disclosure of relationships between employees and vendors, and two, requires special approval before the use of related party vendors. If related party vendors are used, the rates, prices charged by the vendors, as well as our invoices, should be analyzed periodically to determine market rates are being charged. So the policy uh, as proposed sets forth four criteria that every vendor must disclose prior to consideration. And if any of those criteria reveal a conflict of interest or perceived conflict of interest, the policy sets forth the process uh, that must be followed to utilize a conflicted vendor, culminating with the township board approval, regardless of the size or duration of the contact contract. So even if we're buying one pencil, if that vendor has a potential conflict of interest uh, that has to come in front of the township board. Uh, conflicted vendor use and or contracts are also limited to two years uh, to ensure periodic review. Uh, so the second recommendation is that the policy should establish documents of process, uh, of vendor approval and the criteria that would classify an unallowable vendor. Uh, as I mentioned, the policy sets forth the conflict of interest criteria and the process for selection of vendors with a real or perceived conflict of interest. Recommendation number five states that a change report containing new vendors and changes to existing information should be periodically reviewed for reasonableness. Uh, so the policy contains a provision that the vendor change report will be generated every six months. Uh, we've uh, identified January and June as those months. Uh, and those will be included in the financial reports that come in front of the board. Uh, and that change, those change reports also become part of the annual budget. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, recommendation number six is that all vendor information should be entered into the system. While there will be exceptions, those entries should be few and easily identifiable. So the red vendor registration form contains all the required information necessary to register a vendor in the township financial software. Uh, and the policy contains provision for the periodic review of the vendor report to ensure all the required information is completed. Uh, recommendation number seven, seven was to inactivate duplicate vendors. Uh, policy also contains provision for the periodic review of the vendor report and the inactivation of duplicate vendors. And recommendation number eight is that the vendor list should be periodically reviewed and vendors made inactive if they have not been paid within a set time frame, such as seven years. Um, so the policy does contain that provision, periodic review. Uh, we've actually called for vendors to be inactive after three years or more. Uh, we find that if a vendor hasn't been used for three years, the chances of us using them in year four, five, six, or seven uh, really doesn't exist. Um, if there's an inactivated vendor we want to use again, they do have to complete their registration process over. So if the Township Board chooses to adopt the policy, uh, our implementation will begin immediately. I've already started talking to department heads about that, uh, but it will take uh, a period of up to six months to uh, work to get the current vendors in the Township fully registered or inactivated. So our hope would be by the middle of uh, next year um, that it would be fully implemented. In the meantime, we're not going to stop using vendors, um, you know, if we can't get that vendor registration form from them from them right away. Uh, adopting and implementing the registration policy really has little direct cost to the township other than staff time to implement. Um, so asking the board to consider the township vendor registration policy. Uh, I will note that I we have not completed legal review yet. Uh, so I'd ask if the township board does want to consider adoption, they adopt it subject to the approval of the policy by the township legal council. Trustee Norder. I just have a couple of questions. I just want to get clarified. Under the exemptions uh, for registration, uh, benefit providers, uh, health, dental, vision. I understand like Aetna is probably not going to fill out our forms, mm -hmm. but the agency representing Aetna and the agent representing that, yeah. they are going to fill out the forms, correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. I can I can make that clarification. Yeah, but that was the idea. Um, that, yeah, the actual vendor itself, you know, there's a potential for that conflict. So we would have them. Okay, then I have one more a little further down. The insurance payments, automotive, liability, workers' comp. Again, State Farm, I know they're not going to do it, but State Farm agency and agent. Yep. Okay, I'll make that clarification as well. Okay, thank you. Trustee Shipley? I think I reviewed this uh, day or two ago and i think that it meets all our concerns and certainly as a policy as we go along we can tweak it a little bit and i don't have any problem with it as long as the legal beagles say okie dokie i move to adopt the um, vendor registration policy uh, contingent upon approval by our legal counsel support that's a motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Nordhook, to adopt the proposed Cascade Township vendor policy pending legal approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 087-2022. Consider the Parks Committee appointment. This one speaks for itself. I have to find it. it is this an ad, Grace, or did somebody go off? There's been a vacancy for a while, and I think when they when we modified their bylaws, maybe we could number the packets because I should have for the packet of information. Okay. When they modified or we as a board modified the bylaws, we created two additional seats. I believe this uh, would she would be appointed to one of these currently vacant seats. So her time, is that correct, Ben? That's correct. Okay. So we hit it out of the park with this one, thanks to one of our park committee members. Um, Ms. Bokenstein's, her resume really speaks for itself and she's a parent of young children, but also her professional background and expertise um, will definitely assist a parks committee that's already on fire. 
So with that, I think you summed it up. You said a resume I, speaker. I dare, I dare you to disagree. I guess it's you know teasing. Anyways, discussion questions. She is a Cascade resident, right? Because she is crossed off up here. I don't know that we um we crossed. I redacted her personal information. Okay, that wasn't what she is in Cascade. Mm -hmm. Okay, I make a motion to accept her and not uh, recommendation support. It's a motion by Trustee Kessel, supported by Trustee Shipley to approve Ms. Eileen Bokenstein to the Parks Committee appointment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I'd like to thank um, committee member Joe Engel for finding Ms. Bokenstein. Item 088 2022, the amendment or repeal of the township's animal control ordinance. So earlier this year, uh, the Kent County Animal Control Operations were officially reassigned from the Kent County Health Department uh, to the Kent County Sheriff's Department. Uh, that restructuring was a result of extensive research completed by the County Administrator's Office, uh, and it received unanimous approval by the Township Board of Commissioners. Uh, so with animal control operations now being under the Kent County Sheriff's Department, the animal control officers have received supervision and training from sworn staff and that's more in line with the law enforcement function that they perform. Uh, the county believes that the supervision and training will translate to safer and more effective animal control services uh, to the communities that are served by the county. Uh, so up until this restructuring, the animal control officers primarily took enforcement action by citing violations of the health department animal control regulations. Uh, but as the health department is no longer overseeing animal control operations, <clears throat> Those officers aren't able to enforce those particular regulations anymore. So in sort of to solve that issue and update regulations that were nearly 20 years old, the new Kent County Animal Control Ordinance was drafted and approved by the Kent County Board of Commissioners. Uh, so I attached that ordinance for your review. It's a municipal civil ordinance and enforcement action will be taken in the form of civil infraction citations. In more serious cases involving animal complaints, the officers and deputies will have the option to cite and or seek charges under other applicable state laws. So with all this going on, uh, one limitation that was found out that the Kent County Animal Control Ordinance, uh, pursuant to state law, they only have jurisdiction to enforce the ordinance in cities, villages, and townships that don't have their own animal control ordinance. Um, and we do currently have an animal control ordinance. So right now, the Sheriff's Department is unable to take civil enforcement action in the township until our ordinance is either repealed, amended, or removed, uh, or we remove the animal control enforcement action. So if we want to do that, the first step in the process will be to set a public hearing for the ordinance amendment or repeal. Uh, we're recommending that, that they be set for our regular township board meeting on November 16th. Uh, so once that public hearing is held, the township board will be able to repeal the current ordinance or adopt an ordinance amendment at the meeting or any future meeting of the board. So attached a couple items for your review, uh, a press release the county put out regarding animal control operations, our current animal control ordinance, and the Kent County Animal Control Ordinance. So our ordinance that's in place right now is pretty straightforward and really only regulates two things, animals running at large and animal waste. Uh, we do have other ordinances, uh, including several sections of our zoning ordinance that contain other animal regulations. Uh, we'll note that those ordinances don't have to be amended or repealed, and they can be remained in place and continue to be enforced. Uh, because of the simplicity of our current ordinance and the fact that all of the regulations in our current ordinance are also included in the Kent County ordinance, staff is recommending that the township simply do a full repeal of our current ordinance. Uh, this allows the Kent County Sheriff's Department to fully enforce their animal control regulations in the township, and they'll work with the Cascade Township Zoning Administrator to do so. Um, as I mentioned, if we want to move forward, got to have the public hearing, and after the public hearing is held, uh, the township can take any action that they choose after that. So the repeal or amendments of the animal control ordinance itself comes with minimal costs, including staff time, printing, and publishing. But by going through this process, the Kent County Sheriff's Department will be able to oversee animal control activities in the township according to their ordinance. And these services are also already included through our East Precinct Agreement. So no additional policing costs will be incurred in order to oversee the animal regulations. Uh, with that, the, uh, I will also note that um, tentatively, uh, at the November 16th meeting, the 
Kent County Sheriff's Department Lieutenant in charge of the animal control officers will be here to answer any questions that you guys may have about uh, their system or the process or anything like that. So um, with that, we're recommending the Township Board set the public hearing for Wednesday, November 16th. I just have a question. So is there more to the ordinance than what you gave us? This is the only part we would amend or? Nope, so what's in there is the township's full ordinance. Okay. It's literally just two pages. Okay. And half of that is definitions and stuff. So really the only enforceable items in there are, you can't have your dogs running at large. You have to clean up after your animals. And both of those are also included in the county ordinance. So uh, there won't be anything that we uh, need to. So some of the other townships in Kent County have animal control ordinances that talk about, you know, if you can have chickens or how many goats you can have on six acres and all that kind of stuff, because that's in other parts of our ordinances and our zoning ordinance, we don't have to consider any of that. Are we allowed to have chickens in Cascade? <laughs> you can, uh, just uh, not in the R1 district or R2 district. Um, so in the, the agricultural districts and the farmland preservation. Oh, so you have to be out in the agricultural. So are there any drawbacks to us ripping this up? <laughs> I personally don't see any, any drawbacks. Don't see it. Um, I was just going to say that. The <laughs> argument could be made if the board wanted a specific township staff person to just like the Kent County Sheriff's Department can't do animal control uh, regulations using our ordinance. We can't, we can't use the county's ordinance to do uh, control actions either. So if we decided that, no, we want the township zoning administrator to be the one that does animal control, then we would want to keep our own ordinance in place. Okay, so no drawbacks. Just checking. This makes a lot of sense. I, I moved to set the public hearing for the repeal or amendment of the Cascade Township Animal Control ordinance for Wednesday, November 16th, 2022 at 7 p.m. here in the Wisdom Center. I support. It's a motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Shipley, to set this matter for a public hearing on Wednesday, November 16th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Article 11, public comments. This is our second session. Please comment on anything. Try to limit it to three minutes. I was going to ask. Thank you. Thank you again. I, I was originally here for the following purpose, and that is uh, regarding the ordinance regarding noise, construction noise, especially uh, impacting uh, that noise as a result of construction and impact uh, of high noise, in fact, to residents at Cascade Lakes. Uh, it's something I should have done a while ago, but essentially, um, I would ask you, I would plead for you, and based on reasonableness, same reasons that you're, you talked about possibly the impact to residents uh, of, the, of the expansion of the plan that it's ongoing, that you consider, in fact, modifying the hours of, in fact, when construction can be made, especially construction that is impactful, especially on a Sunday. Why would you allow construction on a Sunday when people are resting typically, right? Or why would you allow construction, which involves a high-pitched noise, sawing, movement of equipment at five in the morning, or in fact, up to 10 o'clock at night when people are trying to rest? Families today are more than ever working two, sometimes three jobs just to make ends meet. And so... I'm a businessman. I have my own business. I've been in corporate world as an executive for quite a while. I get the idea of getting things accomplished and businesses having to do that. But there has to be a balance. And so I submitted a letter to Ms. Madison yesterday, uh, waiting for a response as to one incident. There's been many before, and I am guilty for not reporting this earlier. I've lived here for now close to 15 years. My fault. But the fact of the matter is, is that I would ask you to review the whole ordinance, especially regarding noises and construction and what the impact to, in fact, citizens and residents like myself and others who have small child, uh, children, pardon me, and, and were put into bed or, or just a, the, the sanity of sleep. There's extensive data where sleep is more important than actually what you consume or, in fact, exercise. And so I would just submit that you take that in consideration. I have a copy of the letter to Ms. Madison here. 
I'm about to send another one today because again, they were doing much of the same. And again, yes, sir. Mr. Fernandez, what would, would light be part of that as well? I mean, a lot of times when there's yes, sir. construction, Absolutely. Noise, there's lights which are just as yes, annoying sir. or more so. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and this is not taking into account uh, veterans like myself who may, I'm not saying I do, may have PTSD or in fact uh, are impacted by other things. So it's light, it's noise, and, and this would include all types, but it's primarily uh, when there's lack of consideration, when there is construction. And again, I just took too long. I, I'm on the road a lot overseas. And, and so here I am today. Are these individuals or, or contractors? It's a, it's, it's, these are contractors, specifically, uh, I live at- You're fine. Oh, okay. Uh, I live at uh, Cascade Lakes. It's myself and several neighbors, uh, at least nine of us that I can count. And so it's on Burton. It's a construction where the park is right behind us. And um, it's it's just not reasonable. And, and again, why would you why would you work and do this on to disrupt everybody's peace on a Sunday? Typically, everybody has peace, but also the hours involved. If you look at your ordinance, it basically gives them free reign to work up to 10 o'clock at night. Most people are up early, like I am at five in the morning. Including weekends? Uh, including weekends, Saturday and Sunday. That's what it says. I think that's unreasonable. And all of you hearing you today strike me as incredibly reasonable and rational people that want to do the best, right, for, for, the, for uh, Cascade. And so that's why I'm submitting this. Very quickly, you brought something up and you sparked some of my interests here. The whole matter with contractors and vendors, which I have a lot of experiences, I would suggest respectfully to conduct due diligence, require due diligence on your contractors. Why? Because if something goes wrong, I'm telling you what your legal department is going to tell you, essentially you're liable. Think about that. So due diligence means a lot of things. The other thing I would say, especially if they're having to do with information security, cybersecurity today, you want to make sure that there's a portion there on the supply chain. Because if the supply chain is a supply chain coming from a country like China, which is attacking our country today, and or it's fact not trustworthy, you're going to impact the entire system and it's going to corrupt what you have, including your government systems here. And many government systems at the local level, state level, have been attacked, whether through ransomware or other matters. You don't want that. You want very strong due diligence when it comes to contracting, especially regarding cyber and information security. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Manager Swayze, can you, what is the, what's our current ordinance um, and the rationale behind it? So I, I don't know it off the top of my head. And it was, it was drafted probably in the 1970s. I think that's one of the original ordinances. So I'd have to do some more research, um, but I can certainly do that. And um, we could possibly look at what sort of, uh, some of our surrounding communities do as well. Let's put that, let's put that on our to-do. Yep. Thank you. As I Trust recall, to kind of a uh, coattail on, on Ben's comments, the original noise ordinance was enacted to prevent late uh, concerts, like when we used to have the concert hall or the ice arena be next to the old fire station. Uh, that impacted several people or several uh, neighborhoods and uh, fireworks to prevent fireworks from being at that time, illegally um, set off at late hours of night. So it probably needs a good overhaul. You're here. Any other public comments virtually in person? Thank you for coming. Manager comments? Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming to the uh, groundbreaking ceremony today for the fire station. Uh, just a great project. Um, like I said, when I was there, there was times over the past couple of years, I didn't think we'd make it to that point. Uh, and for it to culminate uh, with the project going forward, just really exciting and uh, um, something that I'm excited about professionally as well. So that's all I got. Board comment. As always, Maury, I talked to you earlier. Thank you everybody for being here. Unfortunately, I think we lost most of our electronic folks. Um, I'm real bullish on resident rights and uh, I won't give that up. And um, by all means, bring your neighbors next time.
Any further comments or a motion? Make a motion to get out of here by adjournment. <laughs> I'll support. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley to adjourn, supported by Trustee McDonald. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. I was ready to say maybe, but we were avoiding eye contact.